Hello, my name is Lynn Sollenberger. I'm in the agronomy department at the University of Florida. One of the challenges we have in Florida with forages is the relative lack of availability of forage legumes. We have rhizoma peanut, which is a great legume, but it's vegetatively propagated, which presents some challenges. So one of the things we're interested in looking at is whether we can incorporate alfalfa, which is a seed propagated legume, into some of our existing grass fields to increase forage quality for a range of livestock, particularly for dairy, but uh, for other animals with high nutrient requirements. So in this particular study, the question that we're trying to answer is what do we have to do to control competition to developing alfalfa seedlings from an existing Bermuda grass field? So this area was planted at Tifton 85, and then we seeded alfalfa into that existing Tifton 85 area. We used a number of treatments to control Bermuda grass competition. One was a low rate of glyphosate during the fall before planting, and the other was we uh, looked at different heights uh, to which we cut the Bermuda grass before we planted the alfalfa. So we've harvested this area now for uh, the entire growing season. Uh, it's been planted about 10 months ago, and we hope to continue it through the rest of this year and uh, into next. One of the challenges that we have with alfalfa in Florida, of course, is that it requires deep, well-drained soils, as well as high soil fertility and high pH. And there are limited areas where we have uh, potential soil characteristics that allow for alfalfa's use. But in this area here in the central ridge of Florida is one of those locations where alfalfa can potentially be grown. So now we're in the real world and seeing how alfalfa Bermuda grass mix perform in a dairy situation. We're not the North Florida hosting in Grucrush County and I just spoke to, to Stephen Grime, the crops manager here uh, at the dairy. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to join us because they are getting ready to cut. Actually, they are just getting into the field here and cutting. This is the sixth cut of the season. This field of alfalfa and Bermuda grass has been planted late fall last year. They cleared it in March and already got six cuts, uh, averaging probably a ton of dry matter per cut. So it's pretty good considering that's August and it's very hot and the alfalfa is growing and ready to be cut. So they <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Don Bennick for always supporting our research and letting us do our trials here. Everyone, uh, I'm Jose Dubé, I'm a forage uh, agronomist here at uh, University of Florida, IFAS North Florida Research and Education Center. Uh, I'm here today in Bascon, Florida, and I'm with uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Conrad. Uh, thank, thanks for having us today, and uh, I would like uh, first, to introduce a little bit you, and uh, I want you to talk, you know, about your farm and your experience with alfalfa. Okay. My experience with alfalfa, we started, we planted our first alfalfa in 2001, the fall of 2001, and we harvested it in 2002. Uh, never knew anybody that grew any alfalfa around here. And it was a learning experience. We read, I read everything I could about it. Most of it was from the Midwest. And uh, we learned the hard way. You don't do it like they do in the Midwest here. Our humidity is different. Our soil is different. Um, and so it took a little learning curve to uh, learn how to do it. The first two years it took to learn how to handle the alfalfa and our humidity. We have done very well and we have done very bad. Uh, we have learned we have to put a little nitrogen on our soil here to make the alfalfa do well. It does not inoculate very well on my land, which could go 20 miles down the road and it may do totally different. The market's very good for alfalfa, one reason we like it. And also, I mean, it's, it's a multiple cup crop, so we're cutting it up to eight times a year. So if one gets rained on, you still got seven more to, to sell, hopefully. Um, we started growing perennial peanut because it was in a comfortable market with alfalfa, we also grow Bermuda grass too and tried a mixture of alfalfa and Bermuda uh, with mixed results. The, uh, so that's amazing. So you cut every 21, 25 days. And, and so how many cuts per day you typically, typically do here? How many bales per acre? Uh, normally we get eight cuttings a year, roughly, sometimes nine um, bales per acre. Normally we start off like 
40 bales an acre for the first three cuttings and then it really starts tapering off during the summer and what it wants to do is just get real steamy and bloom so <clears throat> during the summer normally our quality goes down and our volume goes down to about 20 to 15 bales depends on the first or second year uh, we did start going to a year and a half rotation because the end of the second year it just ain't worth keeping it just you just can't get enough volume to keep it so we normally destroy it, and we was actually putting Sudan behind it, a short hay crop, and hay legion it. So, so compared with um, perennial peanuts, the perennial peanut, how many cuts you, you do per year, and 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 versus the alfalfa? So that do you think that's an, an advantage of alfalfa or not? When you're talking about hay production, I think it is advantage of more cuts per year because of of the rain risk here in Florida. Perennial, we get two to three cuts a year. And most time you're going to get some wet. There's just no way around it. Uh, where alfalfa, you're getting eight cuts, so you spread out your risk a little bit. And uh, alfalfa seems to be, it's not as thick during the summer, so it dries a little faster. Uh, we did change our way we dry alfalfa here. We actually tether it out to dry it as quick as we can. And things like that helps with the quality too. Okay, very good. Thanks a lot, Bill. Thanks, thanks for, for your help. We're especially thankful to the uh, Milk Checkoff Funds and the, the program by the dairymen who have supported this work and include several studies, uh, including in two other experiments, one on farm and another one here at the Plant Science Unit. Thank you for watching this video. And if you have any questions, please find us on Facebook at UF Forage Team. Send us a message, like our posts, and keep posted for updates of our research and extension projects. 